and Steph Beckett here at the first day of NAB Show 2025, joined by my old industry friend. I guess we can say we're old friends now, John Henkel. How's it going? It's going great. Good to see you again, Steph. Good to see you. This is a very different show than I am used to covering. So first of all, why don't we talk about like what what is NAB all about? Uh, broadcast. I mean, number one. And I have a long association with this show. I won't tell you exactly how long. But it's, it's fun to now be at Netgear, because we've done a couple of NABs before, mm -hmm. and people were questioning, why are you guys here exactly? But now that over IP is everywhere, broadcast over IP is a thing, and we're here uh, at a bigger booth, bigger presence, more partners, so it's really fun for us to be here too. Yeah, Good segue, because let's talk about the partners. You have a lot of them, and do you, do. Have, you are adding more, it seems like, every day. So want to talk about that a little bit? We just reached over 400, and uh, you know, I put the signs together, things like that. There's always one more. I'm like, no, stop. At some point, we had to stop. <laughs> No, uh, in shows like this, we'll find probably, we'll probably get 20 more partners here easily. Um, people are finding out because of other manufacturers trusting us for one thing, that they also want to do that. There's not many other switch manufacturers who are giving them the attention that we are. Like we'll configure a profile for you. If you have special needs on a switch that needs to be configured a certain way, we'll, our engineering team will work with you on that. And that's pretty special attention. Yes, that is another good thing about you. Y'all are very, very people focused and, you know, more than a manufacturer, it's partially like this, the service of offering the help and the, the support because just kind of selling, like giving someone a product and just telling them to get lost, yeah. that doesn't do anything for our industry. No, no, we from the beginning, we noticed that in commercial AV, we really made a name for ourselves with that. We, uh, we developed a team called the Pro AV Design Team, simple email address, proavdesign at netgear.com, and they're quite frankly, almost overloaded. We've kept adding more people to that program. So what they do is help you design your network, pick the right switch, design your network, and then help you install it and make sure everything is covered. I think it's more important in the broadcast world because IP is new to a lot of people. I come from broadcast. I started broadcast a long time ago working for TV stations. I know engineers, and they need to be, rightfully so, very careful about what they put in there. So when IP starts coming in and it's like a switch, and it's a network, and it can be a lot of configuration issues, a lot of different problems that may arise, so uh, we make sure we can help hold your hand, if you will, and, uh, and make that transition really easy. And that's what's really resounding in the marketplace. Do you want to talk about products a little bit? I know you've got the Engage 2.0, and that's one of the things that you guys are really, really talking about here. Do you want to talk about what specific pain point you were solving when you introduced that product? Yeah, for us, it's been a real nice growth over the years. So initially, the, uh, we call the AVOS that was on the switch. We pulled it out to a software called Engage. And the reason I mention that is people still don't know we have that sometimes. So they love our switches, but hey, Engage software, free software download that will help configure multiple switches. Part of that, with the broadcast world, we're excited to announce we're the only ones in the world being able to configure our switches with a hybrid SMPTE 2110 profile. So in a matter of a few clicks, basically, you can figure, configure the boundary clock and all the transparent clocks down below, which is really important. That's what you need in SMPTE 2110 and broadcast to make sure things are in sync. We all want audio and video in sync. Sure. Kind of important. Very important, especially in broadcast. And, you know, a, a few minutes to configure versus days that's days. that's very big and that is money saved like people not having to do as much work like this is a very clear savings and you can go worry about other parts of your project um, I, I don't know if I can say all this live so I won't say that on camera okay. but there was a really big project recently where it took weeks to implement a lot of switches there's a primary and a backup uh, a very large worldwide event um, we always allude to those sort of things right. But uh, other manufacturer switches were used, they were comfortable with them, that's great, but uh, it took them weeks to f figure this properly, whereas we would do it in a matter of seconds, literally. So that's the kind of stuff that people need to see for themselves. So you can come by the booth, you can get demos of the Engage, uh, have Laurent, our product manager, we'll do one of those videos too with him, uh, and really see how easy it is and how reliable. And we, since we work with the manufacturers, we know it's certified as well. So it's not like we just can figure it on our own and figure out, this is close enough. We work with Ross, we work with NDI, we work with all these people to make sure, and Simpty, of course, too, make sure this stuff actually works. Yeah. What other products are you focusing on here? I know Wi-Fi 7 is another big thing that you guys are focusing on in your products. Yep. Very good. We've had it the last couple of shows. We have it here as well. It's on top of one of our racks. We're using it for our Wi-Fi here, of course. Uh, actually, other booths are using the same thing. So our, our Wi-Fi access points, we have a couple Wi-Fi 7, which is the latest and greatest. Uh, WBE758, if you're looking for product model numbers, and the 718, and we have more coming along the way. But those are two products that are sold in the channel where you buy your AV gear as well. So you're not gonna find those particular ones on Amazon. So they have the margin built in. So as you're installing the equipment for AV over IP, they're probably gonna wanna use Wi-Fi for controlling. 
for commercial AV, of course, it's a tablet for a control room. For a cross-broadcast, it could be a temporary installation like a concert and they're streaming out or broadcasting. All your techs may want to use Wi-Fi, of course, to make it easier to configure all the gear. So why not have it all with Netgear? And then those access points are also controllable, controllable through Engage, as well as our router, the PR460X router. So now we have the whole package on Netgear Engage, all Netgear, you're good to go. Well, talk a little bit about the two industries, because broadcast and AV used to be very different, but as someone who has spent a lot of time in both, are you seeing them start to actually become one industry? Do you think that that will happen? I don't think it'll be one. You're seeing a lot of crossover, for sure, kind of like residential and commercial AV in the same way, too. But there's certainly a lot of companies here, like us, that are at all those shows. Uh, the technologies are switching, are, are coming into both play, coming to play in both markets, for sure. Things like 2110, though, is only within broadcast, because you don't need all that complexity and cost then for commercial AV. But we've been in the broadcast world, things like NDI will be in both, Dante Audio, uh, AES 67 with Ravenna and others. You know, uh, All that stuff is, is applicable to both worlds, but there's still going to be a separation. Yeah. There's stuff like IPMX, which is cool, mm -hmm. that does take some of the goodness of 2110, mm -hmm. but doesn't require all the clocking and all the expensive parts. That'll be used in commercial AV, and you can then pair that also on a network with 2110 at the same time. So there's some really cool solutions out there that we'll see at both markets, both trade shows. Do you think we're going to start seeing even more adoption of, you know, SIMD 2110 IPMX within AV standards? Because some people who are against it are like, well, because of HDCP, we're never going to see. And I kind of disagree. I think that the more that we start using them, the more they're going to be forced to, you know, incorporate HDCP so that, like, we can eventually, like, stream Netflix with a broadcast standard if we have to. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's hard. And SIMD is an awesome organization. They've been around forever. And AB's been around for, like, 100 years. Yeah. So obviously they know what they're talking about. They take some time, I think, to get stuff uh, you know, configured, uh, adopted, and regulated and everything else, which is great. That makes, they lock it down. I don't know what HTCP is going to be with 2110, for that kind of world. I know that I almost forgot about HTCP because it's, it's just not talked about anymore, <laughs> yeah. right? I don't know why I thought of it just well, now. <laughs> but it's one of those things that people don't realize, but it isn't supported in 2110. Yeah. So okay, but they'll figure that out, I think, uh, at some point. I'm not technical enough to know the underpinnings of why it isn't supported or what can, what's going to happen. But those are the sort of things that people can make a choice. Yeah. You can use like uh, commercial AV standards when you need to or broadcast standards when you need to as well and mix and match. Yeah. Well, last question for you and it's a real easy one. Where can people find more information on Netgear? Oh, an easy question. That's great. Netgear.com slash AV. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Steph. Good to see you. And don't forget on our side too, you can go to ravepubs.com forward slash NAB show for all your NAB 2025 coverage. Once again, I'm Steph Beckett and we will see you next time.